three of my talks to talk about three natural plants and I you'll notice I've taken off my lab coat because there's not going to be any need to process these plants in the laboratory in any way they are three naturally growing plants but I believe that taken together they will provide health and recuperation and a better quality of healthy lifestyle than uh, people would have without them. You may remember that uh, I said how the father of medicine uh, said that make your food your medicine and your medicine your food. Hippocrates, the guy who uh, created the Hippocratic Oath used by all doctors. Well, here are a few plants which can be regarded as food supplements because they don't always get into the normal diet found in the foods we buy in our supermarkets. But they have special properties and it's those properties and that I'd like to talk about now in three separate talks. Well, the, the three plants I'm going to talk about are aloe vera, aloe vera is the first one, tall fescue is a grass, that's the second one, and the third one is cannabis sativa. Um, and those three plants together can be found. The first two grow naturally in the UK, and in Northern Europe. The, the uh, aloe is more usually found in warmer climates such as Madeira and south of Portugal but pretty plentiful in all of those places. And those three plants can all be milled into dried powders and it's important not to heat them up for reasons I'll explain. Um, but when they are dried and milled and mixed in the right proportion, they can be encapsulated and offered on the market as a food supplement. And a great supplement it would be too. Well, let's start with the aloe vera. Aloe vera um, grows naturally, as I say, in warmer climates like Madeira. It's for thousands of years been known as a curative plant. Some people even believe that it might be the same as the asphodel used in Greek mythology to cure uh, diseases and wounds. And certainly if you apply it, the gel, the natural gel from aloe vera to your skin, it will help where you've had a burn or pain of any other kind damaging your skin. But not so many research programs have identified why aloe vera is so potent and so helpful uh, in helping you get better from uh, minor ailments. And, and recently we've found that the, it is the different kinds of sugar within aloe vera which are doing the job. As I may have explained already in other talks, what our cells have around them in their membrane is a whole forest of sugar. Uh, and these sugars are uh, called the glycomembrane, the glycocalyx around cells, don't only feed the cell, but they have a more important role in delivering information, catching information from the brain and from other cells and delivering it inside the cell so that the cell knows what is going on in the outside world. And these sugars are very specific. They, they um, have different kinds of glycoproteins, a great number of them really when you think about the um, structure of a normal sugar with its carbon and hydrogen and oxygen they can be capable of infinite variety and as such they can collect very precise and different messages and relay them inside each cell. And it's that use of sugar 
these special sugars, monosaccharides as opposed to polysaccharides, which gives them this special ability. Uh, now, the trouble is, of course, that most of us don't eat aloe vera normally in our diet, and you won't find these special sugars. And I'm talking about one called fucose, not fructose. That is pretty plentiful everywhere. But fucose is another sugar, and mannose, which aren't so plentiful in normal supermarket foods. But they have uh, the ability to deliver energy into the brain and the parts of the body that need it. And they also have this incredible uh, diversity which will allow them to act as first messengers on the outside of cells. When you get cancer, as I think I've explained, what's happening is that it's a metabolic disorder. The cancer needs a lot more sugar than it should have to make energy from uh, glucose. Uh, and it's not because it's changed its energy pattern, it's gone to make energy from uh, an, in a more primitive way without oxygen and that primitive way needs three times as much sugar and the cell therefore takes the sugar from outside its membrane all those glycoproteins and in the gly glycocalyx and uh, uses them up and when it's done that it can't hear anything from the outside world there's no more informational content coming in so it doesn't know what to do so it becomes no longer a part of our body, starts dividing outside of regulatory growth control, and bingo, you've got a tumour. Um, I've talked about ways of resolving that problem, but that is an example of how these sugars act as providers and catchers, if you like, receivers, uh, like antennae. They are literally like antennae with sialic acid residues coming off them, just like a TV aerial, and they do collect this information. So, providing this information to the cells by means of aloe vera uh, will help those cells to understand what's going on and how to react to it. And that is basically the first um, of the plants I want to talk about. And if I now give you some examples of what it can do, uh, you will find uh, this uh, uh, interesting no doubt. Aloe vera is known to be helpful in solving wounds but it has other uh, properties. It appears to be able to reduce pain, it appears to be able to reduce seizures, it appears to be able to uh, correct even small mutations of the human uh, cell. Um, and these corrections are because it uses different sugars from those where the damage is done. For example, there is a, a, quite a rare di disorder called GLUT1 or G1D, which is where the um, glucose transporter, which carries the glucose into the cerebrospinal fluid, uh, is deficient. And the transporter cannot do that because it, it can't be made because of the mutation. And what happens then is that the uh, patient or the sufferer uh, ha cannot develop their brain fully. Uh, there's probably not full myelination of the brain. The uh, energy levels in the CSF, cerebrospinal fluid, are low. And that leads to... Uh, epileptiform seizures across the brain surface. Um, it leads to what are called absences, where uh, the brain is just simply not functioning for a while, for a small period of time. And these together, with uh, an, an intense feeling of tiredness most of the time, uh, cause uh, a really serious disorder. Fortunately, it's extremely rare but uh, we think that if we can use a different transporter, the glucose transporter being absent, but if we use a fucose or a mannose transporter, and they have their own transporters on different genes, this might solve the problem. We hope we have that approach. Um, well, that's one example, but there are plenty of others. Um, where I've seen uh, 
cases recorded of quite serious cancers uh, being reversed um, after the uh, use of uh, aloe vera. And what may have happened there is that the cell which has been devoid of uh, its sh sugar coating, its uh, glycocalyx or glycophorus, if you like to call it that, um, has been put back. And when the forest gets back uh, its sugar, it then can listen to what is happening in the rest of the world and come back into regulatory growth control without actually being uh, destroyed. It just changes back its means of creating energy to the normal oxidative phosphorylation means that we normally use and then acts just like a normal cell again. And there, there are, those are just two examples of what happens with the ingestion of aloe vera. Um, there must be many more. In fact, there is a book which I'll put up later called uh, the six, sorry, the eight healing sugars. Mm -hmm. And these healing sugars are all monosaccharides, of, uh, one of, only one of which is glucose. The rest have different names. Well, that's the first plant that I want to talk about, aloe vera. It's, it's, it's not, you can buy it simply in shops, uh, in, in many forms, in gels to put on your skin, uh, in powders to eat, in liquids, juices, tinctures, no doubt as well. Um, and so it's commonly available, but uh, I think people aren't very sure of exactly how it works. And I hope that in this talk, at least, I've been able to throw some light on that. Well, thanks for listening, and I'll talk about the other two plants in two separate videos uh, later. Thank you.